consulting firm did a study and we reached out to the top executives in healthcare around the world and we asked them a very simple question. How important is disruption to your enterprise? Out of all the respondents, 100% of them gave it on a scale from one to four, gave it a four as being critical to the future of their enterprise. And then we asked them one other question. What's disruption? And none of them were able to answer the question. Disruption is nothing more than the speed and the size of innovation. Now the problem is, and it's a real problem, is that we have been trying to fix the broken healthcare system through incremental innovation. But you'll see today that the real opportunities, in addition to having this balanced portfolio, is to also invest into disruption. And the best way to look at disruption, I think Picasso described it best. He famously said that every act of creation is first an act of destruction. I believe that when you look at well-developed healthcare systems that are emerging around the world today, these beautiful innovations are coming after they clear off the ashes of the destruction of a legacy system and they create completely and total new models. Destroy what's lame and replace it with what's beautiful. Here's the problem, is that when you talk to most leaders in the healthcare bureaucracy, when you talk to most people who own the decisions in healthcare, they um, are just starting to believe that change is coming. Then eventually, they start to deny it. And I find that one of the common symptoms of denial is that they have this sort of hyper internal focus. They try to rearrange the deck furniture on the Titanic. And then they go through, you know, in other phases, like they'll start the process of thinking about hiding from it. Then of course, one of the problems that we see in North America is they blame the government. They blame third party providers. They blame regulations. They blame everything except the dysfunctional system that they authored and believe in and that have frankly have doubled down in. Eventually, disruptors and losers all get to the point of realizing that massive change is happening. But it's not until they actually embrace it to understand the DNA, the molecular structure that makes up disruption and leverage and use its incredible superpower to do what we intended to do in healthcare in the first place and that is to impact the quality of life. But those who embrace it, those who are willing to understand the makeup of disruption ultimately nail it. Because the technology, the systems, the methods, the tools, the processes are all there today. We don't need to invent them, they are already invented. So if disruption is the problem, innovation is the solution. We need to develop core competency around fast and big innovation. Voters, constituents, want better experiences. They want an Uber experience. They want an Amazon experience. They want an Apple experience. We have people who are experts at architecting beautiful experiences that want that patient, and they're going to get that patient by delivering better experiences. And what is a better experiences? Patients don't want to wait. They want to have transparency. They want solutions. They don't like redundancy. They want an experience that is equal to the experience that they currently enjoy on other digital platforms. The other thing that will have a very big impact is the massive impact of enabling technologies and connection architecture.
And when it's connected, it will deliver far more value. In the case of patient care, we're going to get to the point, and we're already developing this right now, in the university where I run the Center for Innovation, we're building out an interoperability lab and digital health lab where we're building out anticipatory technologies as our most innovators today. We want to be able to monitor patients all the time. <music> Lastly is real value. We're starting to ask real questions. We're at a time right now where we have the ability to really question many things related to healthcare, not least of which is drug costs. This is a strategic inflection point when we're having that discussion. Nashville's an interesting place, and it's kind of hard to describe it. So I'm there talking to this really interesting guy at this craft brewery, and, um, and he was saying, Nick, and he said, he's a medical technologist. He goes, so Nick, check this out. This buddy of mine, Keller, has this like really cool idea. And so the idea is he's going to get like flying robots, not remote controlled drones. He's going to get flying robots that are thinking machines that learn and understand. And these flying robots are going to fly all around Rwanda and save thousands of lives a year. And I'm like, that doesn't sound right. He goes, no, no, Nick, I'm not saying that they're going to do it. Keller from Zipline, zipline.com, is now saving thousands of lives in Rwanda by leveraging disruptive innovation that includes the connection architecture. These are places where off-road motorcycles could not even access women that are bleeding to death after childbirth and individuals that need life-saving antivenoms and other medicines. I was recently at a hackathon in Southern California where I was working with kids that had embryonic band syndrome, which meant that their fingers were not formed. And rather than it being something that they were embarrassed about, they would get together in hackathons and they would use Arduino technology platforms and Raspberry Pis and MakerBot Replicator 2 fifth generation 3D printers. These are 12 year olds and 14 year olds. In fact, we're starting to use things like virtual reality and augmented reality. It's incredible. You really feel like you're experiencing it. So people that are literally dying of, of cancer, that are spending the last days of their lives trying to get better, that historically would watch toxic medicines pump into their veins, are now flying over the southern tip of the Great Barrier Reef. They're diving into the tropical ocean and experiencing swimming with beautiful tropical fish at the last years, our months, our days of their lives. This is a curative way in which we're leveraging 3D technology and it's actually having a clinical impact. And it's certainly improving the overall quality of care. Again, look at Netflix. Netflix rules the universe because they created moments of movies. Spotify destroyed iTunes, which we didn't even know was possible, by creating moments of music. Amazon completely changed everything by creating better moments of merchandise. In fact, there's this, what, this is how big a deal this is. You know, it used to be that it, you would go on your device to buy something on Amazon, and then you would have to take your index finger and put it in the shopping cart. I mean, think about that. You, you, you go from here to there. I mean, who's got time for that, right? We don't have time to be going, doing this all day when we're trying to buy stuff on Amazon. What are we retired? So what did Amazon do? Buy with one click. Because Amazon are experts at delivering perfect experiences that are risk-free. That's the, the future of healthcare. Not surprisingly, they just bought PillPack. And if you look at the acquisitions that you hear in the subterranean dialogue, Amazon wants to own the voice and they want to own the physician of the home. They want to digitize and leverage all of this stuff that we're talking about, and they will have a piece of it. I think that there is an opportunity maybe to look at some of these changes and realize how good this, the news this is. 
We're going to leverage technology to get patients in sooner. You guys deliver beautiful health care, but we need to see them sooner to save lives. Dr. Rich Milani, who is the Chief Transformational Officer at Ochsner Clinic, they were able to actually reduce re-emissions in hospital by 50% just by using an eye watch. We're also going to leverage gamification to incentivize patients to behave slightly different so that we can help them get to a healthier state. We're also going to leverage patient experience design to really consumerize patient care in a way that makes them happy to where they really, really like the experience in addition to the quality of the care. And I think lastly, you're gonna see a change in focus from diagnosis and intervention. That's all cost to anticipation and wellness. That's the mother shift that occurs about seven, eight years out. Do we try to stay in that denial state and try to rearrange the deck furniture? Or do we accept the fact that disruption is really happening and that we can avail ourselves of these systems and these tools and these methods and these technologies to not just impact the economics, but most importantly, to impact the quality of patient care. Thanks you guys, I appreciate it.